I'm going to do something that I would not recommend anyone else do for fear of you damaging your project. Oh no, I broke it! Oh, oh no, I broke it. I went to punch that hole out. Goodness. Coming apart over here. Hear it. See that. Oh, but damn, it's working. <laughs> That's really loud. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to go in just a little bit different of a direction. I want to get back to doing things that I used to do in middle school and high school, and that is taking little gadgets apart, toys, whatever, and using the parts to make something else. Uh, I haven't done that in a very long time and I miss it. And today I want to start by putting together this little radio kit. This is a little AM FM radio kit that I found on Amazon. I got a link for it if you would like to do this with me. Um, as I do this, I'm not going to go in depth with like the engineering and the functions of how these little radios work because I'm not the expert on that as of right now may change in the distant future, but right now this is more of a, I am practicing soldering, getting used to handling the delicate um, components and things of these small electronics, and hopefully this will work when I'm all done. Let's get going. Okay, so let's, now let's move this out of the way a little bit here. Let's open this puppy up, see what we have after I clean all my disgustingness off the table. Okay, so this whole kit comes with USB power. It's interesting that it's a USB to power pole. We have a little speaker. I'm guessing that's about two inches. I'm not going to measure it right now. We have a bag of components that are not individually wrapped. Uh, we've got some chips in there, some LEDs, capacitors, resistors, antenna. There's a power plug connection. That's very good. Uh, we have a PCB. This PCB is marked on one side for, see how close I can get that. Yeah, Each of these uh, pads on here looks like it's labeled. Hopefully every one of them is labeled. We'll stick that over here for now. There's that. Okay, and th this is the uh, plexiglass pieces for constructing the case. That's good. This is... looks like a big chip, or actually looks like a card. Oh, that's the LCD display that comes with the kit. So we'll go ahead and we'll just keep that in here until called for. Uh, a little bag of hardware. We got some double-ended nut connectors, little screws, nuts. Hopefully, that's everything we need in there for that. And the instructions. So I'm going to keep the LCD and the speaker in this box for the moment. And everything else, I think we can lay out. Okay, so I've decided I'm not going to take all this stuff out of this bag at the moment and try to like on all it, you know, in a nice organization, but uh, mainly just because I don't really have a mat to organize it with at the moment, and I just, I don't want to lose things all over, so instead, I'm going to keep it all in here and just kind of take things out as needed. There's not a crazy amount of stuff in here, so I should be able to find what I'm looking for when I need it. So instead, we are going to crack these directions open, And hopefully they're fairly complete direction. Oh, <laughs> uh oh. This just now became a learning experience for how to assemble 
via a diagram because these are not instructions. This is a diagram and component list only. Unless there is a user manual. Let's give that a shot here. Let's break out the old... Uh... Okay. So, in this kit, it gives you these QR codes. You need to use your smartphone and scan that top code where it says user manual. That gives you the instructions for assembling the project. Um, thank goodness, because I'm not really experienced enough to just be able to like, yep, I know exactly what all this is. I want to get to that point, but I'm not there at the moment. Oh, and there's even illustrations, too, within this uh, manual. Okay, that's good. That's really good. All right, so, alrighty, let's uh, start with step one. Install one piece SMD component RDA 5807 MFM receiver U2. Okay, well, I guess I need to dig through my bag of parts. There's U2. Oh, okay, I already see what it is. Okay, so this first component's uh, the chip that goes in the center of the board. I'm going to use these um, tweezers to show you. See if we can even see it. Okay, so you see right there, U2 RDA5807. That's this component that goes right here. That's going to be that chip. I have to find it. And before you ask, yes, I'm grounded. I don't know if I have this part. Surely I do. Yeah, it's got to be that right there, right? Well, it's RRD-102, that doesn't look right. Oh, okay, yeah, I found it. Okay, so that's going to be the smaller chip. And, man, you really got to look for it, but right on the, the black chip of that, you can't see, you know, you can't see it, actually. No, you can't actually see the thing. It does say 5807 on it. And on the PCB, it has a diagram of this, uh, um, the receiver, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a capacitor, but that cylinder right there. All right, it's got these two pins on the left. On the PCB, it has that same um, illustration of it saying which way it goes. I think I'm going to put a dab of flux there just to hold this thing. I mean just a dab. Just a dab. I can get my freaking flux. Oh! Well, I got plenty coming out. I mean we just want just enough to hold the thing. Yeah, that's that's plenty, plenty, plenty. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Well, you're just going to have to trust me here. She's on up in the place. I'm going to get her soldered in. And I definitely need the magnifying glass for this right now. I'm burning this thing, I think. I hope not. <laughs> I kind of really want this to work. Alright, I have the chip in place on the board. Soldered up. On to step numero dos. Okay, so now it looks like we're going to go through the, uh, the resistors. So... I'm going to pull out the resistors that I see. Ooh, hey, they just came right out. Alright, so I have all these resistors. And I also have these resistors. Oh, yeah, come on, camera. Let's go. There we go. Those resistors. And I got a couple of stragglers in the bag here. Oh, I see, because those are different. Those have a different uh, stripe pattern, which means a different value. I'm going, to, I've changed my mind, I'm going to actually put all these in the box. So at least I'm still not going to run away, but I can sort through easier. 
This says install 10 ohm metal film resistor R6. Now, I don't remember if I have a chart for the resistances because I can't remember what code is what. So let's give it a quick Google just your color code. There we go. 10 ohm metal film resistor. There's only one of those. So if there is only one of those, then it must be the guy that's by himself here, which is going to be brown, black, black, gold. Can you see it? Can you see brown, black, black, gold? Yeah, that's that guy. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to double check. Yep, that's the one. Just checking the chart because brown is 1, black is 0, and gold is 0.1. So this is actually be like a a 10... 0.1 ohm resistor. That's the one we need. And that goes to R6. Let's try to find R6 here. God, come on, Dean. <laughs> you, can, you can find it. Oh, I found it. It's way down here. It's not... Okay. See, the R6 spot is not labeled as R6, but it does have the resistor um illustration there and it says 10 it doesn't say 10k or anything like that just 10 therefore that that has to be a 10 ohm resistance position and if it's not well then I don't know what to tell you but that's what I'm going with well I hope I'm doing this right <laughs> I'm gonna be upset if I'm not I'll try to keep these cut as I'm doing this so that way I'm not friggin losing my mind so I'm gonna try to keep them off of my carpet so I don't get them like in my foot. Alright, I'm two components down. About a hundred to go. I think we'll uh we'll time lapse the resistors and I'll catch up to you when we start diodes. Okay, I don't know if I'm missing something or not, so I've got <clears throat> these four uh, 10,000 ohm resistors left over, but I have filled the PCB in all the spots where there are resistors supposed to go. Um, so actually, why don't I just recheck the instructions and maybe it says there will be leftovers? Yeah, okay, there's 11 on the board, so I just have these four extra. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these to the side and I will store them in the little plastic drawers. Okay, so now we're going to move on to diodes. We got a DO35, IN4148 at D11. Alright, again I'm just going to go ahead and time lapse through the diodes.
that's it for all the three diodes. Just regular diodes, not LEDs. Yeah, I got a bunch of them coming up. But now, we're going to move on to Crystal Oscillator. Which, by the way, on that chip that I was talking about earlier, that little cylinder, that is a Crystal Oscillator. This kit has two in it. Here's another one. This is the 11.0592 Crystal Oscillator. We'll install that. Afterwards, we are going to install a socket. Now, it is time for DIP8 IC socket at U3. There's U3, and I found the right component. Okay, here we go. Okay, socket installed. I have another one that goes at U1. I know which one that is. That is... That's this one. That goes right into... Ah, you're not seeing anything. Okay, so this was the... What is this? This is a DIP40 IC socket. And we're going to place it into U1, which is this big, long row of stuff. I'll time-lapse that, because this is going to be a while. Folks, it is capacitor time. I need capacitor. What capacitors do I need? Two two pico farad. There they are too. Little orange guys. Twenty two pico farad. All right. So now we've got two chips to install. These are KA2284 chips, and these are LED drivers. Okay, that is what I thought. <laughs> Alright, so with the LED drivers, that's these chips here. Alright, if you can see at the end there, where one end looks like it's been cut off at a 45, according to the illustration in the instruction manual, That is to match with a little square at the end of each of these slots. Okay, and there it, it has to be that direction. I thought that was anyway because the instruction does say that you have to verify its direction, but um, the pictures that they have in the manual do specifically say that that cut goes to the square on the board. Identify the positive anode and negative cathode lead of LED. The leads of LED must be installed correctly otherwise LED cannot be turned on. Here are four methods as following which typically from what I understand okay so this is your typical this is the, the LED that comes with the kit light emitting diode it's a light bulb, basically. Now, from what I understand, positive is the longer pin, negative is the shorter pin, typically. I'm going to read the instructions to make sure that they, uh, they concur with that. Yeah, it just says the longer pin is positive anode lead, the shorter pin is negative. Yeah, so... And I believe those are going to go all go at the very edge here. Alright folks, it's a little past my bedtime now, so I'm going to finish this project tomorrow. Um, 
So, I mean, I'll, I'll see you in probably, ooh, I don't know, 18 hours. <laughs> but you'll see me in about a, well, something like that. See, told you. <laughs> Alright, it is now the day after, and uh, it's actually kind of late at night. I had to mow the grass earlier, and then I took a nap, and stuff like that. So, we're going to go ahead and continue this. Um, and I believe I was at the point of installing the LEDs onto this board. So, uh, let's get started with that. And after I get done with the LEDs, we'll get a, a better close-up of the board so you can see kind of where I'm at before I get the rest of it finished up, okay? So, close-up time. This is where I've gotten. I've gotten all of the 10 LEDs at the top, even though i got this one that's like pointing upward. 10 LEDs, both the LED drivers, all of the resistors, all of the capacitors, this crystal oscillator, these two sockets, plus the chip that we started with, which also has a crystal oscillator at the bottom. And, uh... I mean, it looks like it's coming together well. I don't believe I've missed anything. All the, all the little solder joints look reasonably respectable, I think. So we'll uh, consult the directions and move forward. All right. So this kit is telling me to bend the pins of only one 4.7 U farad electrolytic capacitor, about two millimeters. Note just for only one, and it supposedly is because you have to keep it bent out of the way for uh, another component that goes into C7. There's C6. Oh, I found C7. It's okay, so C7 is this one inside of this bracket here. So that's we just need to have it bent laying that direction so that way when we put the LCD over this, then it's not going to impede with that. I think I have an extra of the 4.7 U farad capacitors. Yeah, I do have an extra one. I better double check all these and make sure they're all the 4.7 U farad. But if I have an extra one, that's all right. We can use them in another project someday. Yep. Okay. So they're all the same. So I do have an extra one. That's okay. I like extra parts. Okay, all of the capacitors are now installed. We will now be moving on to the power socket. That's this right here, female power socket.
right, so it appears I have everything soldered into place that can be soldered into place. Just looking at the back of it here. There's a few holes, but those are not holes that you're going to solder anything to. So, I believe all the solderable components are attached to the board. Minus maybe a couple of things. I know i got to still get the antenna, which goes to here. But... I, uh, we're going to call it a night again. It's already past bedtime. And then, uh, we'll come back and we will definitely finish this project again tomorrow. Okay, folks. Here we are. Yet the third day. And I think, uh, I don't remember what I showed you yesterday, but I think I've got m the majority of, well, actually all of the soldering done to this PCB. It's all done, and I think we're gonna we're gonna get this wrapped up, try it out, and uh, hopefully it works. I hope, maybe, some chance, a little bit. I'm confident. LM three six N, LM three six N. Okay, looks like we're gonna install a chip now. And it goes into this little socket. Can't see what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'll show you in a second. Alright, and this kit came with an extra one that I will hang on to for later in case I need to use it and replace it. I also have an extra switch and this extra one that I'm not using. It's all like the pins are bent up, but I can fix those pins if I need it later. Oh, I said I was going to show you where that went. That went in that little socket right, right there. So there's the chip. Right below it's the socket where it plugs into. DIP40 I see that is this chip, the big chip. And obviously that's going to go on to here. And the correct direction is to place with this little notch. There's a notch at the end here. There's a corresponding notch on the socket that's on the board and on the illustration of the socket on the PCB. There we go. Oh crap. This is going to be a trick. Pray to God I can take this back off without ripping the pins off the chip. Uh oh. We're in trouble. Hmm. I'm going to do something that I would not recommend anyone else do for fear of you damaging your project there we go All right, so now I've actually got to squish these pins in there we go I think hey I got it alright so that chip there there was a little trick I had to do those pins weren't quite lined up on both sides so I had to just very gently kind of bend them in like just a few thousandths just enough to get it to fit into that socket be careful don't bend them too much obviously you could break them off okay so now we're gonna start doing some hardware see if I have a little wrench for that maybe I do maybe I don't and I don't have a little crescent wrench with me at the moment hmm so I may just grip it with some pliers and of course I'm not gonna over tighten it or anything I'm just gonna grab onto it enough to get it done alright so I have those all installed these little copper nut risers the instruction says it's copper it looks like brass it's probably a copper like some cheap copper alloy okay so now we're switching gears to the LCD Finally. And I'm going to do the naughty thing and I'm going to take the screen protector off right now because uh, I want to. And this, okay, so we have a male end 16 pin socket. It's actually 19 pins, but the instructions does say to cut off the extra uh, from this line of pins and then we will attach that to the LCD PCB. Alright, 
right, so I have the 16 pins, male socket pins, soldered to this PCB on the back of the LCD screen. And it's supposed to put it on the female socket, which is this here. And we're going to line this up to where the holes on the corner of the LCD PCB will line up with these uh, copper pillars. And wouldn't you know, it almost lines up perfect. <laughs> we're a little bit off. That's all right. I think we'll, I think we'll survive. But we're getting closer. Getting closer. And it says to not put the screws in the top of that PCB for now. Install one piece's 75 ohm antenna at antenna. Keep a distance more than 5 millimeters from PCB and fix it by tin, not screw. Note that the antenna should be installed on the back of the PCB. That's not necessarily making a lot of sense to me. But it's saying, it's basically saying to solder it, but five millimeters away? Oh, I think I get what it's saying. It wants, I think it wants five millimeters between the base of the antenna here and the edge of the PCB. And it wants, it says to fix it by 10, not to put a screw in it, which it lines up with a screw, but the hole, um, the hole in the base there is not wide enough for the screws it comes with anyway. So I'm assuming it wants me to line the hole up but to solder it. That is one big gob of solder. Okay, so now we're going on to more hardware stuff. It says to put red buttons, red button caps on the buttons. Great view of my arm, isn't it? So just because I'm weird, I have decided I'm gonna put a little solder on the top of a solder joint that way there's solder going all the way through thank goodness for the helping hands okay so now it is time for speaker wire which i don't know if this is actually speaker wire it looks like it is because it doesn't look copper it looks more silvery which if memory serves i believe speaker wire is copper coated aluminum okay so those are my speaker wire Connections right here at the edge of the board, at the right side of the screen. And it's saying that the speaker does not distinguish between... What does it say? Speaker does not distinguish between positive and negative, which most speakers don't, even though they say they do. Yes, I'm using the giant strippers for this, because why not? There we go. That was way more of a pain in the butt than it should have been. There we go. Jeez. That took... Ooh, oh, I started burning the... Oh, that was kind of a pain in the butt doing the speaker just now. <laughs> but it's there. It's soldered. It is connected. Everything's still very there. Okay, we are now going to build the shell, the case, the housing of the device. And it says, as soon as I undo this, why don't I put some things away here? There we go. Put some of my tools up so I got a little room here. Okay, so it is telling me tear off the protective film on the surface of the acrylic shell. And then it says fix top acrylic board and LCD 1602 acrylic board on copper pillar by four pieces with the screws. So this is going to be this board here, I'm assuming. Which I gotta get the film off of it here. Oh gosh, and there's a bunch. Oh no, I broke it! Oh, oh no, I broke it! I went to punch that hole out. That's right, I have some CA glue. I'll fix it with that. But I gotta get this papery stuff off of here first. I'm sure there's probably a better way to do this. If you have a better way to do this and you feel that I should know about it, please let me know in the comment section. Alright, let's get a little CA glue on that brake and we will install it. And that screw was a little longer for that one, but that's okay. Phew, it's a little really warm in here. Um, I'm actually going to turn the soldering iron off. 
because it's really hot. Four side acrylic pieces that attach to that, okay. I don't know how that's going to work, but alright. I'm all about it. We'll try it. Yep. I'll, uh, I'll come back when all these are... <laughs> I'm just going to put the thing together. I will say, I do find this to be kind of an interesting way that they've decided to run the bolts and stuff, uh, or the screws and nuts here. Come on, camera. There we go. Where the nut actually hides, well, doesn't hide, but it sits within the next panel and then pulls the other to it. Interesting bit of engineering. Oh, I screwed up. That's supposed to go on there. Ah. Okay, so I actually need to undo. Oh no. Probably should bring my screw gun in, but also my screw gun is going to be way too big for this. I would be better off with a little screw gun, but I don't have a little screw gun. I know! What a crazy angle! I probably could just pick this up and manipulate it, but what's the fun on that? And I'm pretty sure I've got the uh, speaker wires in upside down. Now, just to prove my theory. Yep. Yep, I put those wires in there upside down. <laughs> That's okay, not the end of the world. So I've got to make an alteration to something I've already done. Not the world's worst thing ever. Yeah, let's see if I can get this out here. Whoops, I turned the soldering iron off, remember? I forgot. I'm going to turn it back on. Give that a second. Alrighty, we're going to try to desolder with the soldering iron. Um, if that doesn't work, I do have the little heater gun. Let's see what we can do this way first. Alrighty, so we're going to just do a little something like this, I think. It's probably pretty good. Just enough to hold it up there so I can work on it. That's why they are helping hands. I probably shouldn't have that one on the antenna, but we're going to ignore that. It's not that heavy. I'm burning up the insulation on the wire. Alright, we're just going to add some solder then. I can't get the wire to go through, which is really not desirable. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey, I got it to work. What do you know? from scratch I think here. This is starting to get just a bit frustrating. Alright. It's just you and me here, PCB board. kind of a mess. Oh, and I'm starting to get frustrated with how I have this thing propped up at the moment. So, I'm going to have to do a little further work here. There we go. Alrighty. Phew. Now let's add a little solder in here as soon as I find my solder stick. Did I drop it on the floor again? Uh, very well may have. Let's look. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Coming apart, I'm telling you. There we go. Let's get these final touches done and get this baby fired up. What do you say? I say, yeah. They're much better. Okay, so now I still need to do just a, the tiniest of doctoring up here. Oh, this is really difficult. Oh, goodness, I lost a nut. Found the nut. Oh, I found the other thing of solder I was looking for too. And my headset fell off. Goodness. Coming apart over here. Alright, back 
I've got this speaker whipped up into the deal here. Very good. All right. Pop that down into there. And I would say definitely when you're doing the final assembly, don't shove those nuts too far in there or you're going to be taking it all back apart to retrieve that nut. And then having to re-put it all back together again. All right. That was the very last screw, as far as I can tell. And, uh, actually, holy cow, I think it's done. I'm going to put a, a little rotating view of this at the end of the video for you. But, before that, let's get this bad boy plugged in and... Okay, I just want to point something out that I'm noticing. Um, there's a little bit of a spread in those PCBs based on the screws. It might be because maybe I don't have one screw in all the way. Mm, no, that's just how it is. It doesn't look like it's really hurting anything. I don't see anything that's cracked or breaking. Um, oh, these little caps don't want to stay on there. Okay, I'm going to put a little CA glue in these caps. I'll sit it like this with the caps in there for a couple of minutes, then we'll plug it in and try it out. There we go. Okay, all right. I actually don't need to set that upside down. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute, and we will get the power cord plugged in. I probably need to clean this mess off my table also. I'll do that afterward. All right. Hello. Nice seeing you again. Yeah, let's go like that direction. Okay, so I have an extension USB because I don't have, I don't, I didn't read what kind of power this radio takes. I probably actually should do that. Uh, obviously it's going USB, but that could be, uh, what, 3 amps, amp and a half, stuff like that. Okay, so the controls for this, this button, whoops, there we go. This button here on the far left of the box is on off. This is spectrum indicator on off, which would be the LEDs at the top. And then your buttons are for uh, volume and receive frequencies. Uh, one's plus, one's minus. So we'll figure that out once we get it plugged in. Yep, we're just going to use the power off my power strip through the USB extension. So I'm going to plug that in now. And then power pole to the radio. Let's see if it catches on fire. One thing we probably should do is just when we plug it in, just leave it plugged in for a minute. See if maybe we get any kind of magic smoke out of it. Hopefully we don't. Um, and actually since I have my headset on, I'm going to take my headset off because I got the computer playing shows. <laughs> okay, now I can focus. I need to be able to hear this radio anyways. Alright. Not smelling anything, not seeing anything. I'm assuming it's good to go now because this is YouTube um, you're not supposed to copy or retransmit anything that's um, copyrighted so if I do if this works and I pick up a radio station I'll just I'll cut it into chunks that way at least you can hear it and see that it's working okay so here we go Stick. Oh, but damn, it's working. <laughs> That's really loud. Okay, so volume down is the second button. Volume up is the first button. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. I'm sure you can hear that static. Let's turn it down a little bit. Oh, okay, that's really cool. Hang on, I want to turn the spectrum analyzer on. It's kind of working. I got two lights working. Anyways, let's go up the band here. Uh, this is actually so cool that it's working. Okay, hang on. Before I go too much further, I want to show you something. Hang on a minute. Okay, so I actually did another... I filmed another soldering project of doing this radio. Okay, this was about the same price. This one doesn't work. I don't know what's wrong with it. And, oops, in the future, I would like to do where I can 
maybe somehow diagnose this, figure out what the problem is and fix it. But I was a little bummed and it, this doesn't work and so I didn't upload it. But I'm so much happier that this one does because it lights up and it's really cool and honestly I think it's a better radio overall. Uh, oh, I should put my antenna up. There we go. Um, yeah, this is actually super cool that I took an idea to do this kit, right? I spent the time, I took my time, I was patient, I did it with my best of the, my own ability, and I made the thing. I built it, I constructed it. Now, I didn't, like, cut the parts and, you know, engineer it, but I have constructed it. And you know what? For as few electronics projects as I've done in my life, I'm so happy that this works. So, uh, let's continue up the band. It's actually working. I'm picking up a local radio station with this thing. <laughs> There's a ghost in that channel. Alright, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, turn it off now. That way I can talk and I'm not screaming at you. Alright, so obviously this works. The spectrum analyzer lights work in sync with the music as it's being produced through the speaker on the back. Obviously, we have our little antenna, and this is just a regular commercial AM, FM radio. Well, supposedly. No, it is not AM. It is strictly FM, which is fine for what it is. It's a neat little kit, a neat little box to display it in. Um, very, very happy that it worked. Um, I have this other one. I, <laughs> I filmed another video doing this one. This one doesn't work, and I was very bummed out, and honestly... Now I'm not upset just simply because this one doesn't have any lights on it anyways. There's no lights. It's not flashy, it's not nothing, which in the grand scheme of electronics, that's not what's important. But to me it is because I like flashy things. Right? I like things that light up and are like really neat looking. That's kind of the my attraction to electronics and devices and things of that nature. But the ooh, hit my light. The fact that I managed to put this together. I managed to put this thing together and everything on it works. The spectrum analyzer works. This little light up LCD screen, LED screen works. It picks up all the stations I expect it to pick up. And my favorite thing about this is that I did it. I took the time to build it. By the way, this kit was $23. That's it. And I had a boatload of fun putting it together and I'm I was, still am, so super excited and happy after I completed it. It's very, very, very satisfying. I'm very happy with it. So, with that said, there's more to come in the future. I have another kit that I'm actually very excited to do, um, plus some other repair projects and things around the house to do, and I have another project that I think is going to be a lot of fun, and it involves a piece of technology from like, let's see, it would be 73 years ago, okay? It's a piece of technology from 73 years ago. So please, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought about this project. I really love it. I, I love that it's only 20 something dollars and I had three evenings worth of fun assembling it. <laughs> And I learned some stuff, you know, mainly on how to solder and not screw it up. <laughs> All right. And with that said, please have a beautiful day.